Hey guys, Double Wide Six, and today we're going to be making a video on how to replace a pump motor for a pool. Little background information on this pump and motor. First of all, there's two separate components. Up front is what you'd call your pump, and in the back is your motor. You do not have to replace the whole unit if, for instance, your motor is not working. Now I'll put some links in the video to where you can get a replacement motor or a pump for your pool. So you'll see that in the description. This pump that I have happens to be a 2 horsepower pump. I have a 21,000 gallon pool. It's overkill. It's costing me a lot of money each month to run it. I've done a lot of research and I talked with a pool professional pump professional and he recommended a one horsepower pump for me and by switching down to a one horsepower pump I can get a longer run time <laughs> pool pumps are made to run hot this one was very hot to the touch, and I got a temperature reading as high as 208 last week, and I cleaned out my filter basket, and that allowed it to lower the temperature. So I'm somewhere around 195, which is still pretty hot, and the reason for that excessive heat is because the bearings need to be replaced. So I'm going to be doing a video in the future on how to replace the bearings in your, in your pump as well. The first thing that you want to do is turn off the power to your pump before you begin working. In this scene here I'm just removing the back cover and I'm taking all the wires out of the pump and I'm pushing them through the clamp so that the wires are completely disconnected. The new motor, I'm going to reuse the clamp. There are several half inch bolts that I'm just using my impact driver to remove and that will remove the motor from the pump housing. Now the motor is disconnected from the pump so I moved it up to a table where I can work with it and I'm just taking off the electrical clamp. There are two Phillips head screws that I'm removing and that will give me access to the impeller on the pump. By turning the motor upright I can put a wrench on the back of the shaft for loosening the impeller. My old pool pump is an Emerson and there's a hex head screw threaded in that is reverse threaded. So I pulled that out before I removed the impeller. To remove the impeller I just used a strap wrench and it's just threaded on normally so just loosen it up and hold the wrench on the back and it'll come right off. You need to remove the seal that's on the front of the pump here to split the pump apart and you can see I'm working off the plastic and right there's the seal I just set on the table. I just took a little compressed air and cleaned off all the dust and debris that was on the plastic. There's a ceramic seal in here so I used a little PB blaster to kind of help loosen it up and it actually came out of here quite easy. I just took a punch and a hammer and lightly tapped on it and there that seal is removed. I just took a little bit of sandpaper and cleaned up some loose plastic debris and then here I'm using RTV sealant just to help make sure that this rubber seal and ceramic seal fit in there nice and tight. So I, I put a light coat of this around and I'm gonna take a socket. I think I used a three quarter inch impact socket and just kind of push the seal down in place and it sat nice. It's time to start reassembling the pump and I'm just putting a little wherever there's a gasket or o-ring I'm putting a little bit of that pump lube and we're putting on the first plastic 
piece and I'm using the, they're about one inch bolts with some blue Loctite. I'm just getting them lined up um, on the motor and I'm gonna torque them down with a wrench. I'm just using my ratchet to tighten down these bolts in a crisscross pattern. And when the entire motor turns, that's just about how tight you want it to be. I just went like an eighth of a turn after it spun on the table to snug it. I'm taking some more lube and putting it on the spring-loaded seal. I'm showing you that the thicker part goes up away from the shaft. And now what I'm doing is I'm putting on the impeller and that just screws down and then I put my wrench in there to hold the impeller in place and tighten it. And I'm removing um, part of the, the switch, I believe it is, so that I can get my wrench on the end of the shaft to hold the shaft in place for when I tighten the uh, impeller. Just like I pulled the impeller off, I'm going to use the strap wrench and snug it up on there. And I have the wrench on the back side preventing the shaft from spinning. And I just snugged it up as much as I could until the uh, strap wrench started to slide. Yeah. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting back on the main seal and I'm applying some gasket lube all the way around. This white spacer goes on with the lip facing away from the motor. To get this plastic piece started, I put the screws all the way through the holes and just lined them up with the holes there. Made sure that they would tighten right in. There was a rough edge, so I just filed it down a little. The last step was to lube up the big two inch opening and then put on the heavy O-ring to seal up the pump. Because I moved from a wider pump to a narrower pump, they gave me this rubber piece, which I affixed to the base just using some RTV sealant. I used some O-rings and replaced the O-rings on the electrical connection. This pump can be wired at 230 or 115 volts, so I have it, the black knob there set to 230. Attaching the motor back to the pump wasn't too hard. I just took a rag and cleaned everything up real well. And I did put a little bit of lube on that gasket to get it to go together. I started all the bolts by hand and then I just took my ratchet and in a crisscross pattern I tightened them down. You want to make sure that you don't make it too tight. You just want to kind of snug it up. I mean obviously if you have leaks you might have to go a little tighter. But I just kind of snug it, snugged it up. I just took a garden hose and I backfilled the pump. That way the pump wouldn't have to prime itself. Even though I took the hose and primed the pump, it's still pumped air bubbles for a while and I think that was basically getting the air out of the filter and that so it took about a minute till it was completely primed. The pump is nice and quiet. It's been running about 25 minutes and about 123 is the hottest I see it getting. Definitely a lot cooler 
than my other pump. I also noticed that the gauge on the sand filter dropped what would normally be about 17 to 9, which from everything I read, it'll be much better because uh, it'll filter better because the water's not being forced through so hard. My salt water cell's working great. Right now it's turning salt water into chlorinated water and you can see that cloudiness so that's working no issues with that and I can run this pump a much longer time it'll cost less money and I can use my salt water generator to generate chlorine much cheaper I checked out the jets in my pool and they seem to be powering pretty well special thanks to James W from Trouble Free Pool he told me exactly what I needed to get, knew a whole lot about pumps, and uh, I got everything going here. I'm real happy with that. And in the bottom of this video, I'll put a link to all the products I used, including the motor, which happens to be a Century or an AO Smith, and uh, also the Trouble Free Pool website. And uh, I'll also put some links to some saltwater generators if you guys are interested. So stay tuned to my channel. I'm going to make a rebuild of the old pump. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you found this video informative and helpful.